Inside this video right here, I'm going to talk to you about exactly everything you need to know about burns, including the rule of nines. Let's dive into it. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey everyone, this is Paramedic Coach and I want to welcome you to our Burns video here. Now if you're new here, be sure to smack that subscribe button down below and for everybody watching, annihilate, smash that like button down below and be sure to hit the notification bell. We do giveaways here every single month and we got new content week after week. Now let's dive into Burns. Now the first thing we got to learn about Burns is first, second, and third degree burns. Let's start with the first degree burn. Now a first degree burn, all that is, is a superficial, like a sunburn. Meaning the burn does not go past the layer of the skin that we can see with our own eyes. Now the second degree burn, also known as a partial thickness burn, okay? See what I've written down here. First degree burn, sunburn. Second degree burn, ouch. Third degree burn, no nerves. What do I mean by that? Here's what I mean. A second degree burn is the most painful because the nerves are still intact, which is the good thing, but man, it hurts. We're going underneath that first layer of skin, the superficial. With a third degree burn, the burn is so bad, the nerves become injured. What that means, that's really, really bad, it's major, but it doesn't hurt as much. So it's a, such a bad burn, there's no pain. So this is what I want you to keep in mind from first, second, and third degree. Now we're gonna move on, we're gonna talk about the different types of burns that you may encounter as an EMS provider. So now what we're going to talk about is the different types of burns that you'll encounter as an EMS provider. And these are big questions on your exam as well. So let's talk about them. So thermal burns. Thermal burns, you got to know, are the most common. Think about it. Thermal burns are based on heat and time of contact, right? That's your classic thermal burn. So temperature and time of contact equals the severity of a thermal burn. Now chemical. Chemical burns have to do with acids and alkalis. Okay? Chemical burn. Let me give you an idea of a really bad chemical burn. Acids are alkalized to a very specialized area like the eyes. That's a bad, bad injury. Why? When an acid or alkali goes onto the skin, it doesn't just cause a burn like we talked about in the first section. What it, talk, what it does is it actually makes changes to the skin. So that is very, very, very bad. We're talking about a sensitive area like the eyes. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Now the next thing we're gonna talk about is electrical. Very simple here. Any electrical current or lightning, okay, is considered an electrical burn, okay? Be careful of high voltage. The final part here is radiation. Is it ionizing or non-ionizing? That's all you really gotta look at for radiation. So these are your four types. The next thing we're gonna talk about is, there's three zones when it comes to burns. Let's talk about those. Now with burns, we have three main zones. Do not get confused between the zones and how deep the burns are. That was covered earlier. Every single burn has a zone of the burn. So let me explain this. This has to do with partial thickness and full thickness burns. I'm talking about the zones. Now here it is. When we have a bad burn, there's three zones. We have the outside zone, 
We have a middle zone and an inner zone. Well, what does that mean? Let me explain. The first zone here on the outside in the periphery, it's called the zone of hyperemia. Now what that means, every burn almost has like a bullseye pattern like this. The most central part had the most contact with the source that caused the burn. This middle part here, the zone of coagulation, is basically necrotic tissue, okay? That's the middle part. This is the critical, critically injured part. The zone of stasis, the middle part here in this ring, okay? That part is right outside the critical area, okay? Right outside of it, okay? So it's not critical, it's right outside. The third, uh, the third zone on the outside, the zone of hyperemia, this zone is basically there based on the inflammatory response, and that is why it's there and showing that increased zone in the periphery. Okay, that is your three zones. Zone of hyperemia on the outside. Zone of stasis comes next. Zone of coagulation comes. This happens on the outside and as far as the death of the burn. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the rule of nines, okay? Now, hear me out here. It's a very, very simple system when we look at it like this, okay? So hang with me, here it is. Now here are our rule of nines. Now I've put head, torso, back, arms, legs, everything's laid out here. We have adult, you gotta remember an adult in the rule of nines is nine years old plus. One to eight is a child and an infant is under one. Now that we know that, we can go through. So the head. So first we have the head. Remember children have a bigger sized head per their body than an adult. So that's the first difference. An adult's head is gonna be 9%, while the child, one to eight, the infant is 18%. Moving down from there is a torso in the back. As you can see here, for everybody, the torso, which is from here to here, the back is all 18%, okay? Moving down from there, we have the arms. So what do we get for arms? Everyone's got 9% on the arms, okay? Now here's where it gets interesting, the legs. Adult is simple, legs, 18%, okay? Now, what about legs for a child or infant? Infant's easy, it's 14%. What about the child? Something interesting for the child. The child starts off at 14%. Every year the child gets closer to being an adult. In this example, they are gonna gain half of a percentage in their leg body surface area, okay? Now what that means, okay, I want you to think about this. This arm here is 9%. This arm here is 9%. This leg is 18%. This leg is 18%, okay? That is how you go over and assess the rule of nines. Now, there's one more thing I wanna talk about here. You have your chart. What if you have a scattered burn? Like there's burns, are, is that, they're not like just like from here to here, from here to here, right? They're scattered all over the place. In that case, you would do the rule of palms. Now, what is the rule of palms? Well, here it is. Not your hand, not your hand, the patient's hand you would use as 1%. So let's say I had a burn here and here and here and here and here, and all little pieces. The rule of palms would tell me the patient's palm is 1% of body surface area burned. And we would base it off that as your scattered burns. Here's your chart to go off of, and that is the rule of nines. We got a few more things to discuss. Now the last piece of the puzzle here for you understanding burns is this. Minor burns versus moderate versus major serious burns. Now let's take a look at the whiteboard here. First thing you can see here we have minor burns for the adult. So any body surface area less than 15% in adult 10% in, in a child or children would be considered, okay, it's a minor burn. Also, by the way, for a minor burn, any full thickness burn less than 2%, okay, that's not in a specialized area, 
like the eyes, for example, that would be okay as a minor burn, okay? Now, hang on. Moderate. Moderate we have, let's say for example, a second degree burn for an adult between 15 and 25% burn. Let's say it was a second degree burn and it was 20% of the body surface area. Moderate. Let's say we have a burn, second degree, okay, Par also known as partial thickness, in a child, and it was 15%. Notice uh, children are between 10 and 20% for moderate, okay? Now, what else for a moderate burn? I'll show you here. A full thickness over 10%. That's a third degree burn over 10%. That would be considered a moderate burn. Now finally down here, we're gonna to talk, to, talk about major burns. Three things I want you to keep in mind with a major burn. Chemicals, inhalation, high voltage. These three things does not mean it is a major burn, but those are three of the things that it's very easy to cause a major burn fast, especially in a highly, we call it a highly specialized area or function in the body, like the eyes, inhalation, okay? These are parts of the body that they get burned, they're very sensitive to that, okay? So think about that first. Now, as far as percentage-wise, look here. Adults, we have 25%. Pediatrics, we have 20%, okay? So that is what we call a major burn. My friends, I really hope you enjoyed this video on burns. And if you are one of these three people, I want you to click the link down below in the description. Number one, if you are somebody getting prepared for EMT, advanced EMT, or paramedic school, if you are somebody who's in class right now and just struggling, you're trying to understand the why behind what you do, or if you are somebody getting ready for your national registry exams, very simply, my life's work is down below in the description. You get access to over 160 videos of my best content to get you prepared for those three things. Plus, you get access to me as your coach inside our private community as well. You can ask me questions while you're in school or while you're studying for your national exams. Click the link down below. I will see you in the inside. And if you are new here, smash that like button and hit subscribe to make sure you are tuned in for all our weekly videos. I will see you there. Cap, oh, like everything that you were saying was just connecting all these, all these, you know, links inside my brain. And I, I just knew right then and there, um, I have to have this program. I have to have all the information that he's willing to give. I need all of it. I went through it. I, I spent the time and money in other areas, and I'm, I'm just going to let you guys know that uh, this was everything I was searching for the whole time. The first couple of videos I watched, um, what I noticed, it just I, I just immediately started connecting dots um, on some of these things I, I didn't have grasp. Went on there, and then I continued reviewing, and I did it for about a month, and you know, it, it helped a lot. Like I said, even after school, and I took that test one time. And I passed it. Your particular program, you have your students engaging and you have your students discussing and you have your students actually using your products. And I'm seeing time and time again, um, students that are coming in and announcing their new certification with National Registry. Adults obviously passing the exam, doing it pretty quickly, 70 questions in about an hour. Um, well, you definitely are like how your videos are. Like I wasn't sure how it was gonna be, but you are how you, your videos are. So that was awesome. So people who are getting ready for paramedic school, or if you're getting ready to go in the Navy as a corpsman or as an army medic, um, you gotta prepare yourself. Evan, I know you got a program that helps people prepare that way. So bottom line is guys, you don't ever wanna hear something for the first time with a bunch of other students. So if you're in a competitive learning environment, you don't wanna hear about AFib for the first time where everybody else, you wanna have and understanding of it before you walk in the room. From 120 questions, passing two sections, um, near passing one, and then I think two below passing, two seven questions passing Sorry, completely. $7,000 for school plus everything else that you put into it all the time. 
and all the time off work and family and everything it's to see people fail and fail and fail and then just quit which I know a couple of people who have I tend to say you know it doesn't hurt to have somebody right there to talk to you know send a question anytime I get the chance I'll, I'll gladly offer or advise them to sign up for you and your paramedic coach it's, it's truly helpful and amazing at what you do I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that, and I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that.